Hey guys, in this tutorial I want to show you how to create a unique Star Trails time lapse like you're seeing here. Now if you're unfamiliar with how to actually capture the images effectively, I've got a full length tutorial over on my website and I'll put a link to that in the description. When you're out in the field you're going to need at least 200 photos which will take you about two hours to capture and once you have those images you can create at least an eight second long video, the more the better. And you're also going to need Photoshop for this workflow and a free application called StarStacks, which I'll have another link to in the description. Once you've got all that taken care of, um, you can use Adobe Bridge or whatever to load your images into Camera Raw, and that's where we're going to start our workflow. Alright, so I have all 400 images loaded up into Adobe Camera Raw, and at this point, my main concern is just getting the image a bit brighter because I want to see that foreground. So I'm just going to increase the exposure and the shadows and that looks pretty good there. You want to be careful though with the sky. If the sky gets too bright it's gonna it's not gonna look great when you start stacking all those 200 plus images. So I tend to bring the highlights down quite a bit and preserve color in the stars and also give the saturation a nice little boost that's gonna help further on in the process. Right now I think my image looks good enough. Uh, it was actually pretty straightforward. So at this point I want to make sure I apply these exact same settings to all of my images. So I'm going to click the three bars, select all, and then sync settings. And just make sure everything's checked and then hit OK. Now one thing I want to warn you about is the profile corrections. For whatever reason, if you enable profile corrections on all of your images, and you go to create a Star Trails image in Photoshop, you're going to get a very weird distortion throughout the image. It's almost like you took a picture of an LCD screen, similar to that effect with the, the lines and the waves. So I would recommend leaving this turned off. And I'm really not sure why that happens. I need to do some more research, but just trust me to leave this turned off for now. Once you've gotten all your settings synced together, you're going to go up to File, oh, actually hit Select All again, make sure everything's selected and then we're going to save our images. Now it's very critical here that we label these numerically. So instead of putting document name, I want to change this to, in this case I've got 400 photos, so that's a three digit serial number, and I want to start it at 001, and that's going to be critical for the rest of the workflow. And you can just save these to JPEGs, it's not too big of a deal that they're in TIFFs or anything. So once you've gotten the numbering sequence correct and you've got them JPEGs, I would recommend saving them in a folder called Star Trails or something where you'll know where they're at and then hit save. And depending on how many images you have, it might take anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. At that point, uh, you can just hit done and we're going to load up the images into Photoshop next. This next portion of the workflow is up to you if you want to do it or not, but you will see as I scroll through the images, there are quite a few planes flying through. And that's going to cause you some problems when you're doing the Star Trails image itself, as well as the time lapse. So it's up to you. If you feel like spending an hour removing planes, I'm going to show you the process very quickly. If not, I'm going to put a timestamp in the comments so you can just skip over this whole part and go right to Star Stacks. Um, so what I'm going to do is load up all of my photos in Photoshop now, and I'll show you quickly how to remove the plane trails next. Unfortunately, since this is a little bit different than the normal Star Trails workflow, uh, it's a very manual and time consuming process. We can't do the black paintbrush technique that we use for the light and blend mode. Um, so in this case, we're gonna have to use our spot healing brush or the patch tool. Both work pretty well. I recommend using the patch tool. For this, you just click and drag around the plane. Click somewhere inside of the selection and then drag that to a similar looking area, let go, and then hit Control or Command D. That's a pretty quick way to do it. And then once you've removed all of the planes, you just want to go through and hit File Save. Once you've removed it from one, then we need to go on to the next file, right click, open with Adobe Photoshop, remove the planes, and so on. And you know, that's going to take you quite a while, but Again, it's up to you if you want to go through this whole process. You can even just get rid of the most bright and obvious plane trails and, you know, forget about the, the more faint ones. 
Either way, once you've gone through and removed all the plain shells that you're willing to deal with and you've saved the images, uh, we're ready to go into star stacks next. Once you get into star stacks, you want to go up to the upper left and click the open folder button and then select all of your images that we saved. And at this point, you can add a dark frame or multiple dark frames just by uh, clicking this button here. Once you do that, you'll want to make sure you hit subtract dark frames. And if you don't have those, though, don't worry about it. Just leave that turned off. And then you also want to choose your blending mode. Uh, if you've got gaps between your stars, you're going to want to do gap filling. I don't, so I'm just going to leave it on lighten. And the most important step is just hitting this save after each step and making sure you save it in a folder you can find easily. Once you do the cumulative image saving, it's going to create multiple images where the blending keeps stacking. And that's what's going to allow us to do the video. Um, you can also toggle on the comet mode and that creates kind of a cool effect. I'll show you a sample here in a minute, but once you've again added your photos, hit save after each step, uh, you're ready to begin processing. And all you have to do there is just hit start processing and it's going to go through and do all the work for you. Next I'll show you a quick demonstration of the comet mode and after that we'll do the final processing in Photoshop. Once StarStax has finished processing your images, you want to go back into Photoshop and then go to File, Open. Find your StarStax image sequence, which you can see here. And the key here is just to click on the very first photo. And if the names are proper, you can see 001, 002, etc. Uh, you should be able to click the Image Sequence button. And then we'll just hit Open. And then you can choose the frame rate. In this case, I want to do 24 frames per second. That's going to be the best option. I'll hit OK. And then finally, I need to go up to Window and click on Timeline. And now I can actually see the video file down here. And I usually like to go about halfway through and see how it looks. In this case, I don't like how everything looks just flat and gray, so I'm going to add some adjustment layers. And that's the nice thing about coming back into Photoshop, is that I can very quickly and easily do my adjustments before I actually finish the video. And in this case, I don't want the foreground to be affected. It looks really bad. So I'm only going to select the sky and then invert that. And again, you can do any adjustments here you want. You can adjust the contrast or the color balance. So I'm just going to do this very quickly for this demonstration. I think that looks a lot better than that. So at this stage, I'm ready to finalize the video. So I'm going to go up to File, Export, Render Video. And here I can choose mainly what resolution I want to export it at. So you can see I have a very high resolution, which is what my camera shoots photos at. Um, if you don't want to shoot this high, you can always cancel out of this. Click on your Crop tool and choose a 16 by 9 ratio, which is your standard HDTV uh, ratio, hit OK, and then go back, File, Export, Render Video, and I would recommend changing it at this time to, you know, HDTV 1080p. Regardless which resolution you save at, make sure you're 24 frames, uh, everything else should be set, and then click Render, and at that point, your video will finally be finished. Uh, if you have any questions about the process we did go through pretty quickly, feel free to leave a comment, and uh, if not, thanks for watching.